Hi, AP Research students. Uh, it's Mr. Z here, and I just wanted to bring you this video uh, today as a support for a really challenging part of AP Research, which is selecting a research method based on whatever your research gap is. So hopefully by this point, uh, you have found a research gap in the literature uh, and in the body of knowledge uh, that's related to your topic, uh, and you have a clear research question and some goals. Um, through the video today, our primary goal is going to be to brainstorm and generate ideas for a research method um, and start to define some variables that we might want to have in our research project. So uh, please follow along with me. I'm going to do a little model and an example throughout the lesson today and guide you through the steps that I would take as I start to choose my research method. So um, the first two things you really want to do here is write down your research question and write down your gap on a clear space um, to ensure that your research question is aligned to your gap. So for example here, if I was doing research on classroom technology use, um, I have the research question, how does teacher cell phone policy impact student engagement in classroom lessons? So after researching this for a while, I found that a lot of research studies um, have examined engagement in the classroom regarding cell phone policy, but it's still kind of up in the air what those policies need to be in different classrooms and which ones are the most successful. Some schools are very hands-on, more restrictive of cell phones. Some are a bit more open. Some use them in lesson types. Um, and so it's kind of uh, up for debate, and that's what I'm hoping to learn more about. Past research, again, suggests that um, cell phones are the number one distractor, but it fails to examine uh, student and teacher perspectives around uh, whether or not cell phone use in class is actually leading to a decrease in engagement or if maybe there's some other factors that play a role there. So as I examine this, I'm looking at teacher and student perspectives about cell phone policy and how it relates to classroom engagement. Well, teacher cell phone policy impacts student engagement in the classroom lessons. It's pretty close with my research question. I might want to revise this later on once I know some of my variables. That's something that you might want to go back and do. But if your question is kind of off because you haven't updated or changed it um, since the start of the year, you want to make sure that it is aligned to what your gap is and what your research goals are. Consider revising your question here in those first two steps. Okay, once you are done with steps one and two, as you see here, checking our gap, checking to make sure that they are aligned uh, between our research question and our gap. Our step three here is going to be to define our variable. So we want to make sure we are clearly defining what our variables are because College Board wants us to do that. Think about uh, being a good researcher. If someone was uh, in need of replicating or repeating your study, one of the goals of the AP Research Project, they would need to know how do you define certain variables in your study? Right? How are we going to put parameters or what we're going to talk about here in a second? How do we operationalize our variables so that somebody else could repeat the study and find similar and accurate results? So replicability is really what we're hoping for here. So this keyword that we're going to learn is called operationalizing, and it's removing any sort of ambiguity or fog around a certain variable. Right? We want to be able to measure it. And sometimes that can be challenging. If we want to measure something like, in my example, engagement, there are a number of ways that we could measure that. Right, uh, We could observe engagement. We could have people report levels of engagement. We could do some sort of scoring on engagement. And so it's important that when we have a variable that we're looking at in our research, that we write it down and we find ways to define and operationalize it. It will help us measure these variables later on. So what exactly do we hope to measure and how can we measure it? So for example here, I'm gonna go back to my brainstorming space. I wanna write down my independent variable and my dependent variable. That's a good place to start. So right now I know that my independent variable, something that's causing a change, right? The thing that um, could be altered in some way to cause a change in what I'm hoping to measure. We know that's going to be cell phone policy, whether that is uh, in the individual classroom, whether that is school-wide, whether that's class or whether that's district-wide or a statewide rule, we want to know what those things are and define them across the different schools that might be involved in my study. So we know cell phone policy is one thing that's causing some sort of change. What am I hoping to measure here? 
Well, I'm hoping to measure student engagement in the classroom. That is my dependent variable. So those are the two things I'm hoping to look at. And in some way, I'll have to learn about different school districts policies. Maybe I'll observe them or do some research um, that are going to be involved in my study later on. And then I also need to find this is a challenging part here. This is the operationalizing I was just talking about. We need to find ways. How do we actually quantify or measure engagement? Right? How might we define these variables more clearly? So in order to do this, we need to know what do we hope to measure? What needs to be defined? Like we just uh, defined engagement. Well, there are different ways we could define engagement. Let's think of, like we've talked about earlier in this year, two different types of data, qualitative data and quantitative data. Well, we could measure both, right? Again, qualitative data, for those of you that need a reminder, is going to be gathering data about lived experiences and behaviors, more open-ended type responses and quantitative tends to gather more uh, numerical data. Um, so numbers are going to be a big part of this. Let's think about this. So engagement is what we're hoping to measure. Well, we could observe a classroom, right, to describe engagement by like journaling. That could be a way that we measure data qualitatively, right, descriptively. We could, uh, I guess we could ask teachers, right, and we could ask students, we could meet with them in interviews and ask open-ended questions. That's another way we could do this. Um, another method type that we've kind of learned about are like focus groups. So maybe in small groups, people could respond to my questions. So another way is a focus group where I have uh, discussion questions for them to focus on around cell phone policy. I can do that with teachers and students as well. Okay, so I have a couple of qualitative measures. Let's think about quantitative measures. So we could actually give a survey of levels of engagement to students. So they get a survey at the end of a lesson and they say, oh, from this number to this number, one to 10, um, this is how engaged I was in the lesson. You could also have teachers report students level of engagement on some sort of Likert scale or survey. So we have quantitative ways to measure engagement in the classroom. Um, we could observe a number and, and a tally number of cell phone time uh, cell phone uses or off task behavior. That's a numerical way that we could uh, measure engagement in the classroom. There could be some sort of scoring like uh, principals, right? Score teachers. Could we use this to measure engagement and, and operationally define engagement? I think if you're ever at a loss here with how do you operationalize the variable that you're hoping to look for, the best thing to do is Google it. Other researchers, or look back to your notes, other researchers have probably taken the time um, to develop a scale or a measure for something that you might be able to use. Um, so like, how do you measure stress? Well, you could do physiological measure, measures like heart rate. So that could be a, a quantitative measure. You could look at breathing. Um, you could look at um, skin conductance or skin temperature, so how sweaty someone is or their temperature. Um, you could track um, sleep, right? Because uh, high stress would lead to lower levels of sleep. So all of these things could be measures. Use Google if you're ever um, feeling challenged to find how to operationalize a variable. And again, that was for our step three, really defining what our variables are and um, operationalizing them so that we know what to do with our next step, which is step four here. So once you've kind of determined what your variables are going to be, you want to start to ask yourself the question. So should I lean quantitative with my data collection? So getting numbers, qualitative, more open ended type of responses, depth of uh, types of questions, or do we need mixed method? Something that uses both types of data collection is going to tend to be uh, better if we can if we can lean towards mixed method. But don't feel pressure to do that. If qualitative or just quantitative are a better fit, pick whatever is the best fit for your gap that's going to allow you to measure it effectively. So as we think about this, if you have an explore type of research question, you're just trying to gather um, more open-ended information, you want to know the why, you're probably going to want to lean towards qualitative uh, methods.
If you're trying to explain maybe a relationship between things, you want quantitative to be linked there some way, as well as maybe some qualitative. So you could have quantitative or mixed method if you're trying to maybe explain the, a cause and effect or some sort of correlation uh, between two types of variables here. So again, quantitative, qualitative, you want to ensure what is kind of the next step here. Well, if we go back to my brainstorm, I know the different ways that I can quantify classroom engagement, both quantitatively and qualitatively. So I'm going to use a mixed method. Uh, I'm going to use um, interviews, right? I had said interviews with teachers, with qualitative measures, so op like open-ended questions. I'm going to use surveys with students that are going to be quantitative. And then I'm going to use surveys with teachers, which are quantitative as well. So maybe that's my method. I have a qualitative element, interviewing teachers after lessons, quantitative gathering um, numerical measures of engagement from um, both students and teachers. And then I can see um, their opinions about cell phone use and whether or not that might be distracting. So I'm gonna have to create those things later on when I'm designing my method, um, but we can figure that stuff out later on. This is just a brainstorm. We know that we can use a mixed method approach. If something ever becomes unfeasible, you can always drop a qualitative element or a quantitative element if it's not uh, within reason for you to get done in the school year. Okay, the last thing I do here. So I've kind of de determined my variables. I know I'm leaning towards a mixed method. I then wanna review my method types. This is my last step to start to maybe brainstorm a few different types that could be a good fit. Keep in mind, many different methods could be used in any sort of variable research. So you could use all the different types but really your goal in AP research is to find the best type of research method, a best fit and justify why it's a best fit throughout your method section. So you're, you're gonna wanna kind of document your reasoning throughout this selection so that when you have to write your paper later on and you have to give your presentation an oral defense, you're prepared with knowing why you picked maybe a survey rather than an interview or an experimental design rather than a focus group. So last step here, let's look at our method types. Generally speaking, they fall into one of these areas here, observation, survey, interview, focus group, uh, a true experimental design or quasi-experimental designs. Um, we have secondary data analysis, so like content analysis. Uh, and lastly, mixed methods, so maybe a combination of observation and interview, right? Those are gonna be the approaches that we might use here. Uh, if you need to review those types, they are um, right here on this slide, um, slides 56 through kind of 58 here. Um, but really picking a best fit based on those variables that you generated in the last step. So I know I want to use both quantitative and qualitative measures. One of my types is going to be a survey, right? That's going to measure quantitatively. Um, and so, that, so this will be a mixed method. I'm also going to use interviews for qualitative experiences. And you know what? If I really wanted to add another type, I could do an observation with both quantitative and qualitative measures. So now I have kind of three different uh, approaches. I'm going to be observing these things firsthand, uh, cell phone use in class, maybe tallying it and journaling about it. That's going to be my observation. I have interviews with teachers, so them talking about cell phone policies and whether or not they find them effective uh, at engaging students or maybe they lead to disengaging students. And then lastly, surveys. I'll measure both student and teacher perspectives around cell phone policies in class and how they actually impact their engagement uh, following a certain lesson in some sort of day. So I have a mixed method type. I could do maybe just asking these questions or as I start to think about this more, I could actually simulate this through an experiment if I really wanted to. Right? I could have a regular classroom, a classroom where cell phone policy is open so students are allowed to use them, and a classroom where it's very restrictive to maybe um, do my observation portion of this. Right? So there are tons of different routes you can go in this transitionary step for choosing a research method, but the most important thing is that there is alignment between your variables and the method you choose 
and you know why you are choosing the method you're choosing and you can justify that by explaining like i chose a survey because i wanted to collect quantitative data a survey that i chose was maybe you adapt a survey from an existing researcher we'll talk about tools uh, and um, instruments used in your experiments in later lessons so again this last step here might take you a bit of time but it's really kind of determining which approach, which research, me research method approach are you going to use here uh, and why? And then kind of going into that more, if you're going to use an experimental design, go into the different types that you might use. Pre-test, post-test is pretty common in AP research. Um, we have one group, pre-test, post-test, multi-group, pre-test, post-test, and I'll check in with you individually about those things. So, um, again, let's go ahead and take the time to do that. Let's brainstorm out these ideas on... Um, a document like this and let's start to figure out and um, narrow down which method might be the best fit for us um, guys i hope today's lesson was helpful um, and i hope you all have a great rest of your day see ya